Stefan, everyone. It's Stefan. artwork for sale, my newest CD, Do Not Introduce Me to Him, it's $5, you know what I'm saying, and uh, this is a couple of my art pieces on sale, they usually go for 10, but tonight I'll let them go for 7, any aunties and uncles out there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so whenever I get off the stage, just holler at me, of course, hey, gotta have love for the aunties, you know what I'm saying. And I'm an uncle, so don't forget that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, get right to the piece. You see, she was a beauty queen. Better yet, she was a sophisticated ghetto queen. Strong on the outside with warm heart and gold on the inside, right along with some spontaneous things in between, you see. She that woman I remember with that 69 code, and she had a lot of flavor about her that was not nice, beautiful, and humble, but at the same time, she was dangerous, freaky, and bold, and she was beautiful. Betty, yeah, she was fine as a motherfucker, right along with a sexy flirting. Man, she had a voice so sweet that it hurt. I remember when, I remember when, uh, <laughs> I remember when uh, we met each other at the parking lot at the liquor store. As I was coming out with a 12-pack of Bud Light in my hand coming out the liquor store, you see. When we talked on the phone, we talked about all different kind of things. Talking about how our health is negative, talking about all the good things is positive, and even got down to talking about some freaky things, you see. When we hooked up, we had nothing but straight up good times. All the way to the early days of hooking up, all the way to the midnight marauder times. And when the midnight marauder times came, that's when we ended up getting freak, freaking and hugging. And I was welding like no other man wasn't welding before, making some freak nasty good love. And then when we was holding each other tight, I felt the right side of her body quiver. Cause I had this black snake swimming in her stomach like an anaconda in a Nile River. <laughs> we were shifting each other's gears straight to the highway. And I was getting freaky just like Uncle Elroy off next Friday. And uh, after a while, we couldn't help but have a breath take. And even though I don't smoke no more, we both end up smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I saw the rise of the sunshine, and that's when the morning came, and that's when I start cooking up breakfast, butt naked like I'm being rain. She said she liked the way I make her feel relaxed and make her feel good. It ain't because I ate her good, it's because I treat her good. You see, months and months went past with us just straight up kicking it. All of us, all the way to just casual dating to seeing her stripping in Victoria's Secret outfits. But after a while, the dating slowed down because she just happened to have issues of her own. It was a lot of her kids' daddy's drama while she was taking care of her kids of her own. Now, I respect the woman that take care of her priorities to the highest degree. And besides, she told me that I'm a good man and she didn't want to take anything out on me. Now on that, I couldn't help but respect that. Nor couldn't help but take my hat out on that. At least she was not bitter as hell, nor she didn't treat me like a dead St. Bernard on Prozac. <laughs> but I'ma always have love for her, even when I live to be old. But at the same time, I still remember her as that woman with that 69 code. Yeah. <laughs> Get on to the second piece. Um, this piece right here represents, you know, uh, you know, you know, all the smart brothers. I'm talking about not just no any smart brother, but even smart brothers that straight from the hood. You dig what I'm saying? So here's some entertainment for you. Check this out. I ain't dumb. 
I just look like this. <laughs> no, nah, you ain't hearing me. I ain't dumb. I just look like this. Just because I speak that broken English and talk with a slang twist. See, y'all steady judging me by my straight up profile. But I kick back and lay back with a six pack and I keep game from a country mile, you see. I represent them brothers from the hood that makes them street smarts with them book smarts. From east, west, down south, back to my Midwest style hood roots. I'm straight out the hood with a bachelor's degree and bougie people feel me but at the same time they don't feel me and that's the reason why they in fear of me. You got these no good systematics. They always be too busy stuck up in their own life. And it explains the reason why they eat a chicken sandwich with a fork and a butter knife. <laughs> you see, I had a dream that I went to a job interview and got nothing but cold stairs. With a shirt, tie, some pinstripe slides, and some rollers in my hair. You see, <laughs> they think that I ain't got the qualifications that was straight up freedom. But I love it when they think that I'm country and stupid. That's when I beat them. You got these systematics, they so, they so stuck up in their own way that if they go to a liquor store in the hood, they'll think that the malt liquor's Mickey's and St. Patrick's Day, you see. <laughs> Them systematics, when they go to a barbecue, they eating everything with gray coupon. But unlike me, I'm rounding up on a doggy bag to take home, cause uh, my grocery bill is low, but y'all don't hear me though. Them systematics, they think about capitalism, and that's a good hustle with class. But I think about survivalism because somebody always verbally, mentally, physically, and emotionally trying to put a hatchet in my black ass. You think that just because I eat a little chicken and drink a little beer, you think I'm obnoxious. But little do you know that under your nose, I am politically cautious. And you wonder why did I walk and talk and keep it OG status like this? Because I ain't dumb. I just look like this. Thank you. That's that fine, everybody. Y'all like that?